Throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be, of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world, explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. Since time immemorial, the culture and customs of ancient Egypt have long been draped in awe and enchantment. Perhaps due to a lack of understanding or a mistranslation, there have been many misconceptions, namely in the modern West, surrounding ancient Egyptian culture, namely their unique funerary practices of embalming, mummification, and sealing away the deceased in elaborate tombs. These misconceptions have spawned an array of myths and legends in their own right, some of which can chill the superstitious to the bone, and excite the imaginations of the adventurous. Among the most prevalent myths surrounding the dead of ancient Egypt, perpetuated by Western media, is the Curse of the Pharaohs. Also referred to as the Mummy's Curse, the Curse of the Pharaohs alleges that any and all who would disturb the mummy's rest, namely the mummy of a pharaoh or other royal figure, would be doomed to endure a myriad of misfortune, such as bad luck, nightmares, illnesses of both the body and the mind, and even untimely death. Whether a person was motivated by greed or the pursuit of knowledge mattered not, as the curse would not differentiate between marauders or archaeologists. An intruder is an intruder, and therefore subject to the misery that they had brought upon themselves. It should be noted that curses relating to tombs and carved within sarcophagi or on the walls of tombs are extremely rare. This is due in part to the concepts of death in the afterlife being so important to the ancient Egyptians that the very idea of grave robbery or desecration was deplorable, an unspeakable act that would no doubt follow them to the afterlife, where they would face the judgment of the gods. Perhaps the idea of eternal damnation would be enough to deter any from disturbing the dead. Nevertheless, tomb curses were frequently used in private tombs in the era of the Old Kingdom, roughly 2700 to 2200 BCE. The tomb of Anktifi, dated circa the 9th to 10th dynasty, reads, Any ruler who shall do evil or wickedness to this coffin, may Haman not accept any goods he offers, and may his heir not inherit. Upon the tomb of Kantika Aikeki, reads the inscription, As for all men who shall enter this my tomb, impure, there will be judgment. An end shall be made for him. I shall seize his neck like a bird. I shall cast the fear of myself unto him. These ancient curses from the Old Kingdom featured an extensive list of punishments including the loss of honor and earthly position, starvation, drowning in the Nile or at sea, the death of their children, and more. Curses in the New Kingdom era and afterwards are fewer in number, yet they may be considered more severe in nature, receiving direct divine retribution from the gods in some of the most vile ways imaginable. They may invoke the fury of Sekhmet, the bloodthirsty lioness goddess, who once nearly wiped out the human race. Or they may provoke the ire of the god of wisdom, Toth, meeting their demise by a disease that no doctor could cure. As most hieroglyphs were not translated until the 19th century, the curse of the pharaohs was often seen as a series of bad luck associated with the tombs and the mummies and artifacts that lie within. One storied account in 1699 concerned a Polish traveler who bought two mummies in Alexandria and embarked on a sea journey with the mummies in the cargo hold. 
The traveler was plagued by recurring visions of malevolent ghosts and stormy seas that kept strong until the mummies were thrown overboard. But what truly ignited the legend of the mummy's curse and its cementing within modern horror fiction was the news surrounding the discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb and the bizarre circumstances that afflicted those involved with the discovery. Tutankhamun was a young pharaoh who came to power in 1332 BCE and ruled Egypt for 10 years. He died young and was entombed in the Valley of the Kings. In 1922, Tutankhamun's tomb was discovered by British archaeologist and Egyptologist Howard Carter. A curse inscription was written on the door as a warning to any who would violate the sleep of the pharaoh. And on the day the tomb was discovered, a cobra broke into Carter's house and devoured his pet canary, leading people to believe that, indeed, the spirit of the dead had been violated. But the tragedy was only just beginning. The first mysterious death attributed to the curse of the pharaoh was the expedition's financier, Lord Carnavon who suffered a mosquito bite six weeks after opening the tomb, accidentally slicing it open while shaving, and resulting in blood poisoning. Sir Bruce Ingram, a close friend of Carter's, was given a mummified hand with the inscription, Cursed be he who moves my body. To him shall come fire, water, and pestilence. Not long after, Ingram's house mysteriously burnt to the ground, and then was swept away by floodwaters after it had been rebuilt. Various others involved with the discovery suffered misfortune and bouts of insanity, while others perished from heart attacks, suicides, and mysterious, unexplained deaths. However, it should be noted, studies indicate that of the 58 people who were present at the opening of the tomb. The majority of them had lived long lives, all dying from common deaths, including Carter himself, who died of lymphoma 17 years after his discovery. But that did not stop the newspapers and word of mouth from sensationalizing the curse of the pharaohs. The stories and gossip surrounding Carter's expedition coupled with the mystical reputation of ancient Egypt, would go on to influence a number of books and films about cursed tombs and mummies rising from the grave to attack the living. Most notably, Universal's 1932 film The Mummy, starring Boris Karloff, as well as remakes by Hammer Films starring Christopher Lee, and the 1999 smash hit starring Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weisz. Though ancient curses designed to ward off those who would desecrate sacred grounds and steal from the dead were only so common, superstitious belief in them from cowardly grave robbers, thrill seekers, and sensationalized newspaper headlines have given the curse of the pharaohs an everlasting life. Do curses really exist? Truthfully, there is no scientific data to back them up. But whether or not they do exist, superstition certainly does. And even millennia later, with advancements in society all over the world, superstition has not truly died, and neither has human curiosity nor the quest for knowledge. If one should happen to find themselves within an ancient tomb or a burial ground inscribed with warnings to trespassers, Better to be respectful of your surroundings, and to tread lightly.